2022 has come to an end, and man, has it been an eventful year for 3D printed construction. I've filmed more 3D printed houses than anyone else in the world under construction, staying overnight in them, so that's what qualifies me to come up with this list of the top 10 3D printed houses of 2022. In no particular order, starting off with Icon, they let me stay in this project when I was staying in Texas trying to get into the Cyber Rodeo event. That video, along with another video featuring the CEO Jason Ballard, is on my YouTube channel. You can check that out if you want more details on this project. It's really high-end and certainly not targeting affordable housing, more maximizing the potential of 3D printed concrete design. Jason was explaining to me that doing projects like this allows them the extra cost of R&D so that they can implement the improvements they've made to all the homes they've built in the future. Next up is Nidus 3D. This is a team in Canada and they printed a four unit multifamily structure which was the first residentially permitted 3D printed building in Canada. I visited another one of their projects and hope to go up to Canada to see a print soon. Last time there was an interruption to their print process and I wasn't able to film. But hopefully next time everything goes smooth. It seems like they've delivered a great product. They've got a much higher layer height than we've seen from some of the other groups using Kobod printers. I also think they did a great job with the wood trim to reduce the monotony of the printed concrete. When you get good even lines like this, you can leave the walls unfinished and it's an attractive quality of the home. Here's an overhead floor plan to give you a better understanding of the layout. The next 3D printed house of 2022 is the Emerging Objects Project Casa Covida. This company was founded by Berkeley professor Ronald Real, who uses Adobe on his Scara printer made by 3D Potter to produce these extremely low cost cylindrical structures, eight of which make up this house that will ultimately have a covered section making the center livable as well. A big question everyone asks these days is about sustainability. So using local raw materials, dirt, straw, clay, reduces the dependence on things like lime and cement that have a bigger environmental impact. Next up is the second of two homes printed by My Robot Builds about an hour from Dallas, Texas. The owner of this company was kind enough to let me stop by and film for the day. We hung out and discussed the possibilities of this exciting technology and how he's bringing it to his local community in Texas. This house has a very traditional floor plan and it's similar in size to a lot of the other homes in the community. When you look closely, the layers certainly aren't perfectly symmetrical, but it's a solid concrete wall. As long as you get a monolithic structure, the exterior is just aesthetic. The founder of this company has sent me some sneak peek shots of their newer projects and their line quality has improved tremendously. This is another group that did a nice job finishing out the interior with a look that slightly distracts from the printed concrete walls. And they were able to do this even though they didn't have the best finish quality. I think it looks great with lots of character. And this bathroom kind of has an aged look like an old European pub or something. Next up is Emergent 3D who was the first to 3D print a permitted residential structure on site in California. This is a tremendous achievement because of how challenging the California construction environment can be. Their CEO, Donna Jamian, sent out a stellar LinkedIn post discussing the cost of 3D printed concrete and how many phrase it in deceitful ways like the wall structure or such and make people think it's the full cost of the building when they hear numbers like $60 a square foot. Don states in his LinkedIn post that it's closer to $350 a square foot all in so that people can have realistic expectations. I thought this was very honorable and the best way to move the industry forward. You can see they're also getting really high quality layers. They have taller lines and this speeds up their process. I'll be eager to visit again and see how this home looks when it's complete. You can see some of the wires and things coming out of the ceiling. On this back wall, they also tried to smooth the concrete, but realized it was taking too much effort and they could stucco it later. Now on to number six. This home was printed by Hive 3D in collaboration with Andre Rodenko. I had the Hive 3D team on my podcast and visited this project with them. We took a walk around and I thought it was really incredible. Their small layer height allows them to do some intricate parametric designs and they've also 
created a huge building that'll have over 3,000 square feet under the roof. They started with the garage structure on the left and then advanced to the larger and more complicated house on the right. They printed some expansion joints. They said they probably used too many. You start to see some of the parametric designs on the right and left. And then as we go through this hallway, you'll see the main attraction. There's so much going on in this house. Curved walls, columns, places for pictures. They really put a lot of thought into the design, which I think is a great idea for any 3D printed construction project, as the printer doesn't mind making these shapes, so you can produce complex artistic designs at a much more effective cost than other methods that would be done by hand. From the top down, we can see that they have a backfill, and this is a type of kind of aircrete, like a foamy concrete that's both structural and insulatory. Next up, we have the Holsterbo House by 3DCP Group in Denmark. This project was designed by Saga Architects, and it also features a very different design, far separated from the traditional four-wall homes that we're used to. It's a tiny home that has these three different compartments sticking out and a loft at the top to maximize the space. They used a Kobod printer for this project, who also happens to be headquartered in Denmark. Now we move on to a super unique project 3D printed in a combination of plastics and wood. I usually don't feature university projects, but University of Maine finally did what I've been waiting for for so long. Concrete is a cold hard material, but wood has a much lower specific heat transfer and so when you touch it, it feels much more comfortable. I really like the idea of printed wood or cellulose. I can't wait to see what materials we'll have access to in the future with the material science industry evolving so rapidly. Sometimes after a project like this, the professor or students might create a spin-off startup. Hopefully we'll see something like that Here's with this technology Here's an awesome time-lapse of them printing this project. The material they use is like a wood dust mixed up with some plastics and they print it off-site with this massive FDM printer. Next up is the Fibonacci house, another one I got to do an overnight in thanks to 20 Additive Manufacturing who printed this project at their headquarters facility in British Columbia, Canada and then moved the concrete pieces on site about 100 yards from their facility. From this angle you're able to see it in the distance in the back. I'm about to point to it. Finally, the last of the top 10 printed houses of 2022 is this printed house by Diamond Age 3D. They've partnered with Century Home Builders to use their autonomous gantry system with multiple tools that attach to the head to complete more than just the printed concrete of the building. I did a podcast episode with their CTO and it was extremely insightful seeing all the different trades they seek to develop and also hearing about Russell's previous experience working at Tesla. We'll even look at some of the listings for these homes which are available for sale right now. Before we do that, I want to take a moment to talk about Automation Nation and my course How to 3D Print a House. This channel is fully self-supported with no external sponsors. That's why I'm able to deliver unbiased information and my raw opinions. This is made possible by my members only community, the Automation Nation, where there are virtual tours of 3D printed houses, a list of 101 concrete printer manufacturers for you to choose from, and much more. The course sold separately is a beginner's overview of all the moving pieces on a 3D printed construction job site, both available at the link in the description. Now back to Diamond Age. They have a particularly high layer height which probably helps with the speed of construction. They've stuccoed the entire interior of the building, which is ultimately supposed to be a process completed by the robot. The roof is currently traditionally built. Here's some of the listings. You can see Century has marked them as 3D printed homes, and there's a ton available. For more details on all these projects and the entire 3D printed construction industry, make sure to subscribe to my channel and consider checking out the Automate Construction Podcast.